so what I really want to talk about today is um, growing your business, right? So thanks everyone for coming to the mastermind, you know, growing your real estate business and increasing your prospecting efforts to gain more clients. Cause you know, I assume everyone can use more clients on their call. Raise your hand if that's true. I can use more clients all day long, right? So I want to share with you how we're going to get some, you know, basically some practical tips and strategies that you can implement today in your business to take it to the next level, right? Now we're April, April 3rd today. So Q1 is over. Who hit their goals for Q1? Raise your hand if you hit your goals for Q1. One person, okay. Uh, who is happy with the amount of homes they sold in the first three months of this year? And who is happy, uh, basically, who wants to sell more homes going into Q2, right? I would love to sell more homes going into Q2. So I wanted to start with prospecting. So as a realtor, this is your most important activity that you do, period, without a doubt. It's the most important activity that you do. It's the lifeblood of our business. And without it, you cannot grow. Uh, a sustainable business and you cannot grow, grow a successful business. So you can't be a plumber without your tools. You can't be a logger without a chainsaw, right? Therefore, it's essential to have an approach to prospecting that will help you generate consistent, steady stream of leads. Now, when everyone gets busy and they start selling homes, they forget about the number one most important activity, which is lead gen, consistent, steady flow of, stream, of, of leads. If you have consistent leads coming in, you're going to consistently sell X amount of homes every single month, right? But if you lead gen, lead gen, lead gen, and then you sell a bunch of homes, you forget the lead gen when you're selling a bunch of homes, you're going to have those peaks and valleys that you know most realtors have, right? So it is essential to have an approach to prospecting that will help you generate that consistent, steady stream of leads. But you know what works for me will not work for you. It might be different than what works for Tom, what works for Nelson, what works for Cody might be different than what works for Alicia, right? So you have to find what works for you. And you have to find that channel that you enjoy and that you're passionate about. Because if you're not passionate about doing it, you're not going to do it. It's simple as that, right? Now, I, I created over the, the last kind of week a 12-month plan for you guys that I'll share with you after the call. And this 12-month plan if you actually follow it every single day, you will easily sell 30 homes this year. Now, who wants to sell at least 30 homes this year? Okay, so if you follow this plan that I'm going to share with you guys after the call, you will sell 30 homes this year, but you have to religiously follow it and you have to stay committed. After six months, you check in, see where you are, and you're going to start to see it. Basically, if you start this today and you follow it for the next six months, you're going to start to see that paying off month three, month four, month five, right? Now, before I share with that, that plan with you guys and go through it, I want to talk about prospecting. So there's many different channels with prospecting, okay? So first one, I mean, my personal favorite is cold calling, right? This is your quickest way to get appointments. It's the way you can cover the most ground um, efficiently. This is your just sold calls. You just listed your circle prospecting. This is calling online leads, calling follow up, calling if your past clients, calling your your sphere, right? Who's doing cold calling right now? Raise your hand if you are. Okay, so we have about half half the group that's doing cold calling. Second one's called email marketing, and apparently when I say raise your hand, it actually automatically raises my hand. Interesting. Uh, who's doing email marketing? So who's sending personalized emails to your database? of contacts to keep them informed about the latest trends and market updates. Raise your hand if you're doing that right now. It's another super, super easy source of business for you guys to prospect. And it's something that you should definitely do. Uh, another one's called social media marketing. So you guys have probably heard of social media before. So this is leveraging your social media platforms like LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram to showcase your expertise and attract potential clients. Now, I like those three platforms. I don't typically deviate too much from those three three platforms. Um, there are three different demographics of people, your Instagram, your Facebook, LinkedIn. So when you're posting, you should be posting on all three. Okay. Another one's called door knocking. So this is visiting local neighborhoods, um, knocking on doors, introducing yourself, door knocking after you just sold the home, door knocking before an open house, uh, door knocking where you have a buyer that's active looking to purchase in that neighborhood. Who likes to do door knocking? Okay. Same thing about half the room. So as you can see, what works for me might not work for for Tom, might not work for Nelson, might not work for Jaden, right? So you got to figure out those sources of business that you want to work when it comes to prospecting. Next one's FISBOs and expires. 
I love Fizbo's and Expireds as a new agent. I just crushed Expireds. Once you learn Expireds, you can do Fizbo's. So that is another, another channel that you guys can focus on, right? And that's part of my, my 12 month plan for you guys. Chase down one Fizbo, one Expired every single week. That's all you have to do, right? Another one's called networking. So, I mean, not my biggest, I'm not my, I don't like doing this personally. Um, so I don't love talking to people in a group. I uh, attend local business events, you know, so this is joining into groups, building relationships with other, you know, this is your chamber meetings, et cetera. Um, the only networking I like you're doing the sports teams, personally myself, I'm also part of a BNI chapter. So I highly recommend if you can get it into a BNI chapter in your city as a realtor, which is the most valuable seat, do it all day long. It is worth the once a week commitment. I get about $200,000 in commission for my BNI chapter every year. So Nelson, would you like an extra 200K? Yeah, right. that'd be great. <laughs> Jaden, I assume you'd probably want an extra 200K, right? So if you can get part of a BNI chapter, I highly recommend doing it. Or if you already have a group of people, um, like a plumber, electrician, uh, mortgage broker, then build your own. But that's a really good source of business for a lot of people. That's an only networking I like to do, right? So once you've figured out which prospecting avenues you want to attack and, and you already start to have a steady stream of leads that are coming in. The next step is to convert those leads to clients. Now that's the hardest part, right? Everyone can, you know, I can go give Nelson a thousand leads right now or, or Jaden a thousand leads right now, but if he can't convert those leads into clients, it's just a waste of leads. Now, how do you do that? You gotta, you gotta sharpen your apps. You gotta really work on your skills. And then these are your closing skills. So um, Tom Hopkins has a bunch of very good books. I've recommended it to probably all of you guys, how to close leads, how to close. And it's basically by asking the right questions. So as a realtor, you need to focus on your craft. So read the books. Grant Cardone's a very good closer. Another guy to read his books is 10X books, et cetera, sell or be sold to learn what sentences, what, what you should be able to say to that person to convert it from a, a lead to a client. Because if you can master that as a realtor, if you can master prospecting and master closing, the rest is gravy. You can basically delegate everything else. But if the, 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 the top realtors in every city are the ones that can prospect the best and that can convert leads into clients. Does that make sense, guys? So once you convert those leads into clients, here's a, here's a few other ways you can do that right now. I'm big on follow-up. Follow-up is the gold. Most agents will stop follow-up after two or three attempts. Uh, I like most of my business comes from eight, nine, 10, 12, 15 attempts to that person, right? So consistent follow-up with those leads and obviously continuing to offer them valuable insights and information to build their trust, right? You're trying to establish that relationship. And a lot of times it's going to take eight to nine to 10 attempts. The gold is in the follow-up. When every other realtor stops prospecting and following up, that's where the gold is. Another thing to do is provide excellent customer service. So you're delivering exceptional service to your clients and you're exceeding their expectations to build loyalty and trust. So I like to, you know, I like to refer to this as providing value, providing amazing value. If you provide value, you will get clients. If you take care of your current clients and give them excellent customer service, you will get business that's just going to flow in from there, right? People refer to people that they do a good job. Part of this comes with confidence. So when you're providing value, when you're showing properties, when you're on listing appointments, if you're not confident, then you're not going to provide great value. If you're not confident in the negotiation, if you're not, not confident in what value that house is worth, then you're providing terrible value. Does that make sense, guys? Now, confidence comes with knowledge, right? So if you're studying the hot sheets and you know what houses are selling for in that neighborhood, you know, you know what all those comps, you've probably been through most of the comps and you're doing a CMA and you sit down in front of the seller and say, you know, Miss Tom, this is what your house is worth. You're ultra confident in that value, right? They can see the confidence. They can see the passion that you're going to get it sold at that price. So providing excellent customer service isn't just, you know, doing a good job. It's providing value to your clients. It's never getting, you never get, um, you never get called out on, hey, what's your commission? If you've provided so much value that they actually say, hey, can we get started today? So where a lot of um, people lose clients and leads is they just haven't provided enough value, enough, uh, enough information to that person for them to make a decision. And then the last part, converting leads into clients is leveraging technology. 
So this is using technology to streamline the process and provide a better client experience. So tools such as CRMs. Now, raise your hand if you're not using a CRM right now. Okay, so we got a couple in the group that are not using a CRM. This is the goal. What, you know, CRM is your basically second brain. So you can use technology such as CRMs, drip campaigns, Google Forms. You know, I like to say drip campaigns are your best friend, right? So when you get a new lead, they're on this drip campaign. You get a hot lead, they're on this drip campaign. Um, first time home buyers on this, this drip campaign. A past client has this one. A client that's recently closed has this one. You know, all your past clients should have an automated drip campaign where you automatically, it checks, checks in with them, right? Every 90 days, it, it puts a task in your calendar to call them. It's sending them an email every single month. It's checking in. Hey, this is your six month anniversary. How's your house going? Hey, two weeks after close. Hey, just want to check in. You've been in your house for 14 days. Do you have any questions? You need any trades? You need any cleaners, et cetera, right? So you should use drip campaigns to make it look like you're everywhere. Does that make sense, guys? Drip campaigns are your best friends. Your CRM is your best friend. Leverage it to make it look like you're everywhere and you will get more business like that. Because a lot of times, you know, people love their experience with their agent that they bought with five or six or seven, 10 years ago, but they haven't heard from that agent since. But if you're consistently checking in with them, automatic, right? You know, our CRM sends them a birthday text message, sends them a house anniversary text message, email as well. And then we also put a task in our calendar to send them a gift basket, right? So it's automated. We don't have to worry about it. And it makes it look like we actually remembered our client's birthday. We actually remembered our client's house anniversary. When you're selling three, 400 homes in, in you know, five, six years, there's no way you can remember 300 anniversaries. There's no way you can remember 600 birthdays. Does that make sense, guys? So it's, it's basically your second brain. It's just actually smarter than you because it can remember all that stuff. And then the third thing, obviously, build your brand. So you're going to establish a personal brand that reflects your values and expertise. And you're going to obviously use this brand to differentiate yourself from other agents. So remember, you're the brand. It's not the brokerage. It's not the balloons. It's not the roller page. It's not the Sotheby's. You're the brand. They're hiring you as an agent to do what they want you to do. So ultimately, really, prospecting and gaining more clients are essential components of growing your successful real estate business. So all you guys that raised your hands and you didn't hit your Q1 goals, it's because you weren't prospecting enough. You weren't prospecting a month uh, enough in Q4 of last year. So by implementing obviously this systematic approach and prospecting, focusing on providing excellent customer service and converting leads, you can generate that consistent stream of leads, convert those into clients, and then obviously convert those into deals and build a successful and sustainable business, right? If you don't have a sustainable business, you don't have a sustainable stream of leads and clients, you're not going to have a lifelong business. So what I wanted to dive into you guys, and I mentioned this, this before to you guys, and I will be sending it out after our call, is basically I, I wanted to make a really simple plan for, you know, how to easily sell 30 homes a year. Because it's not hard to sell 30 homes a year if you can commit to, a structure and a plan, right? So who would want to sell 30 homes this year? Everyone on this call. Okay, great. So if you actually focus on this plan, you know, the purpose of it is obviously to help you build a sustainable and successful business, you know, by consistently generating and nurturing leads, building strong relationships with clients and establishing reputation, right? Now, my goal for you guys is to take this plan, start today, because today is Monday, Focus on your eight hour schedule and, and focus on doing this, right? So obviously the first thing we talked about, there's a few people here that do not have a CRM to manage leads and to track your daily activities. Um, that is essential key. So if you don't have a CRM, start using it today. KB Core is free. You also want to make sure you have an email template for the market stats newsletter. If you guys don't have an email template, send me an email. We can get you a copy of the two ones that we use and you can have this built in KB Core just so you guys know. Uh, third thing is make sure you have a, a door knocking template, right? Really simple, easy to do. It can just really be your contact information. Hey, I popped by and knocked on your door, a story you won't own, would love to chat about real estate. And then the, the fourth thing, obviously we talked about all those different lead sources that you can prospect, figure out really what two or three channels you want to focus on. Okay. Whether it be Bizbos, expireds, cold calling, door knocking, networking events, social media, et cetera. 
figure out which two or three you really want to focus on. Okay. If you like code block cold calling, figure out how to use telelisting and mojo. Those are, are key. If you really like cold calling, telelisting and mojo dialer, those are your two, 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 two um, tools for success. Now your schedule is going to look like this. So in month one, you're going to spend two hours a day prospecting. So this can be using a combination of phone calls, emails, and door knocking, right? 10 hours a week per minimum. So two hours a day, this is prospecting. This is the first thing you do every morning. So it's from eight to 10 or from nine to 11. The most important part of your day. You're also going to spend one hour a day with lead follow-up. So two hours on prospecting. This is getting new business. One hour on lead follow-up. Okay, that brings you to three hours for the day. Okay, your goal is to schedule one appointment per day with a new prospect. If you go on five appointments a week for 48 weeks a year, because, you know, typically you have holidays in there, you're going to sell more than 30 homes, but don't sell yourself short. Your goal is to do one appointment per day. This could be with the first time home buyer. This could be a free CMA. This could be, you know, doing evaluation for a friend. This could, could be, um, book in a new buyer consultation. You're going to post one educational video a week. So this could be like five tips for home buyers, five tips for home sellers. Um, there's that new first time home buyer tax free HSA or whatever it's called that's coming out right now. You could do an educational video on that. The foreign buyer ban, they, they just changed all the rules for that. Could be an educational video on that. Should take you less than 30 seconds. Flip your camera. It doesn't have to be fancy, but just post one a week of uh, educational video and then post one local area video a week. So if you just got a coffee and I'm sure you guys go to a coffee shop or you go to a really good bakery, or um, if you're like me, you know where all the best ice cream shops are in Victoria, um, just flip your camera. Hey, I just got an ice cream from so-and-so shop, this amazing location here in Estevan village, blah, 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 blah. Talk about it, post one local area video a week. You're gonna email your database monthly. So this is your monthly, monthly market stats newsletter and your hot investment picks, okay? You're gonna role play. So in your first month, you're gonna role play three times a week. Now, why is role playing, um, why is role playing important? So on our last role play on Tuesday, we went, went through a bunch of seller objections, Alicia and Laura and Cody, I think you guys were all on that call, right? Now, did those seller objections help? They did, right? So if you're role playing, you're practicing, hey, I want to, a seller says, hey, I want to think about it. Hey, I want to sleep on it. I want to check with my husband. I want to check with my partner. Another agent said they can get me more. If you role playing, you practice those scripts in real life. When you hear those scripts, when you hear those objections, you can handle them. Okay. So role play in your first month, three times a week. There's, uh, I got a role play. John Sai has a role play. Phil Hahn has a role play. There's role plays everywhere, but it's important to do it every, every single week. You want to study the hot sheets one hour per day. Now, confidence makes you show value. If you don't know what houses you're selling for in this neighborhood, what, what that house just got listed, had multiple offers, sold over ask price just down the road from the listing apartment you're going on today. If you didn't know that, you're not going to provide confidence. So knowing what price point, what product is selling, if your clients have a house at this, that's going to move up to a house at this price point, what is the best strategy for them? If the house at this point price point is selling in multiple offers, well, you might want to get their on their house in the market. Now, if this house is selling the multiple offers, then you can tie up this one with a subject to the sale. So knowing where the market is, studying the hot sheets one hour per day is, is huge. That's all I used to do as a new agent is study the hot sheets. I used to look at, I still do every single day. I'll be in bed at nine o'clock at night. My wife would be like, Thomas, what are you doing? I'm like, just, just looking at what's sold. Just looking at what's sold, right? So study the hot sheets. So your day in your first month should consist of two hours of role play, one hour of follow-up, one hour of hot sheets. Then you can break for lunch. Okay, so two hours or two hours, sorry, not two hours of role play, two hours of prospecting, one hour of follow-up, one hour of hot sheets. So that's four hours before lunch. You can do whatever you want in the afternoon, but that's your, your most important four hours. Two hours of that after lunch should be appointments. You know, really appointment you can get done in an hour, but I always like to say two hours driving time, et cetera. Maybe you double up two in one day. Um, and then one to two hours of email CMAs. So that should bring you through an eight hour day. Two hours of role play, one hour, uh, sorry, two hours of prospecting, one hour of follow-up, one hour of hot sheets, two hours of appointments, two hours of emails, CMAs, et cetera. Does that make sense, guys? Is that, is that a pretty reasonable structure? Okay. 
Now those role play sessions are only half an hour sessions, you know, Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursdays, and Fridays is when they typically are on. So you can schedule that half an hour and they're all super early. They're all before 9 a.m. typically, right? Uh, so you do the role play, you go right into your prospecting. Two hours of prospecting, one hour follow-up, one hour of hot sheets, two hours of appointments, two hours of emails, CMAs, et cetera. That's, that's what your first week, your first month should look like. Now, if you keep that schedule for the next 12 months religiously, you will sell more than 30 homes a year, but at a bare minimum, sell 30 homes a year. Now, in your month two to 12, uh, I've adjusted it slightly because now you're going to start learning about real estate. You can start learning what's going on in the marketplace. Okay. So you're going to listen to one real estate education podcast per week. The three of my favorites, and there's tons out there, but three of the ones that are the most useful for me in my business. Tom Ferry, he typically puts out three a week. I listen to all three of them. You can do one, but typically three a week. Mike Ferry is really good. And, and Joe Cheplak. Tom Ferry is more trends, what's actually happening, what's going on with the market, what's really working for a lot of agents. Um, Joe is more raw, raw sales. This is what you need to do to, to you know, light a fire in your butt, get going. So they're two different people. Those, in my opinion, Tom and Joe are the two top in the world when it comes to real estate. Listen to both their podcasts, listen to both um, their educational videos. So that's what I do. You know, your bare minimum month two to 12 is listen to one real estate educational podcast, right? I like to do three to four hours when I'm out for a walk, when I'm, when I'm running, when I'm working out, I'm listening to that instead of music. Uh, month two to 12, host two open houses per week. So we have a, a new agent, Alicia, I think you've been licensed for what, 60 days now. You hosted an open house uh, three weeks ago. You picked up a buyer from it. You sold them a house the next day, right? Or in the next week, right? So brand new agent, zero experience, zero sales experience, hosted an open house, probably used our scripts and our open house template and picked up a client and sold the house. So two open houses per week, month two to 12. That's, it. That's all you have to do, right? You're talking to people for two hours uh, a day, two days a week, two open houses. Anyone have any questions about that kind of structure so far? Month three, now you have ample time in the week, ample time based on the schedule. Month three, you're going to meet with one local business owner per week. So you're just building relationships, getting to know, you know, what's out there, right? Exploring potential referral partnerships, right? So this could be like a plumbing company, electrician company, companies that you're going to really use as a realtor, right? Um, I have a really good lawyer. I have a really good broker, two really good brokers. I have two really good insurance people is that at seven o'clock at Friday, if I need an insurance quote, they're going to get it for me, right? So you're building relationships with local business owners. I have a good carpet cleaner. I have two really good cleaning companies. I got a guy that go fix the leak in the roof. I have a plumber that will show up at midnight if you're, you know, if you're, you're sewer backed up, which happened on this weekend for one of my clients. So you want to build relationships with local business owners. You basically want to become the mayor of your city, right? You want to be the go-to for your clients. So when they reach out to you and they, you, pr you provide an excellent service to them. Month four to 12, you're going to increase your prospecting efforts by attending one local networking event. So this could be a chamber conference. This could be just a charity, um, charity dinner. This could be a Cops for Cancer gala, right? You're getting your face, getting your brand out there. You're also going to meet with your mortgage broker or real estate lawyer. So I like to do meet with both of mine, um, one coffee each per month. So I'll meet with your broker one week, meet with your lawyer the next week. And why you're doing this is you're just getting education. Your broker is going to tell you, hey, where she thinks rates are going to go or where he thinks rates are going to go, what new programs are coming down the line. Your real estate lawyer is going to tell you, you know, uh, what's uh, what's coming up down the line for the real estate law, you know, property transfer tax, tax incentives, um, law changes, things to watch out for the in, into contracts. They're going to provide knowledge to you just by sitting with them for an hour, getting a copy you're going to share insights on each other's industry. They're going to share insights on what their challenges and struggles are. And you're going to do the same, right? So you're growing your guys' mind together. So month four to 12, you're going to meet with a mortgage broker, meet with your real estate lawyer, build that relationship. You could do two mortgage brokers, two, two lawyers, stagger them out, but you should be meeting with those people one per month. Month four to 12, you're going to join a mastermind group. So there's tons of mastermind groups. I'm in three to four of them. Um, join a mastermind group is ideal. And then this is where we're going to really ramp up your prospect. And so month four to 12, you're going to target two FISBOs per week. 
and target five expires per week. Now it all, all depends on your marketplace. There might not be that many uh, if you're in a smaller marketplace, but most of you guys are in a bigger marketplace, two FISBOs per week, five expires per week. Now you're probably wondering, oh God, FISBOs, you're challenged. They don't want to hire a realtor, et cetera. Now in our scripts link that you guys all have, the script, everything you need to say is in there. But here's the thing. Laura, if you go hit 100 FISBOs over the next 12 months, do you think you're going to get two or three listings from it? And two or three listings are 20 to 30 grand. So having 100 conversations with 100 FISBOs is worth you know 20 to 30 grand, I would say, right? But here's the thing. After you meet with 15 FISBOs, you're going to figure out that the last 15 had pretty much the same three objections. Once you learn how to handle those objections, FISBOs 16 to 30, you're going to be able to handle most of those right? You might lose a few of them, but you're going to start getting listings, right? So why I say target two FISBOs, five expires per week is you're going to start to build and sharpen your skills. If you can list FISBOs and expires religiously every single month, that is a source of business that most agents are scared of, right? Who's scared of expires or FISBOs? There's, there's a few of you, right? Who's, who's scared of FISBOs? Who doesn't want to talk to a FISBO? Right? They're the hardest. Oh, they're going to grind you in a commission. They're not going to list with you, et cetera. But if you can master that skill, you just basically created a, a, a source of business that most agents won't even look at. Right? Every, every agent sees it. Every agent scrolls Facebook and sees for sale by owner. So month four to 12, you're going to target that. Month five to 12, you're going to start a blog. So on KV Core, you have that top right-hand side, add a blog. This is super easy to do and share industry insights and updates. So you want to do one blog post per week. Guys, chat GDP is the game changer for that. You can literally get it to write you a blog post for you. And it takes you less than 10 seconds. So there should be no excuse not to be doing one blog post per week. Month six for 12, you're going to attend one real estate educational event per quarter. So I learned so much when I go to these real estate events. These are, you know, um, EXP has tons. They have two shareholders and EXP con. There's, you know, the Ignite in Vancouver. There's a bunch of the Realtor Collective in Vancouver. There's online ones as well. But you want to start learning about the business, learning what works with other, what works good with other agents. And month six through 12, you're going to send out your holiday cards to your database and start working on the print side of the business, right? And at, at month six, you're gonna review your mid-year progress. So I know if you guys can focus on this for your first six months, your next six, six months, so April, May, June, July, August, September, I can guarantee you guys, if you follow this program, you're gonna be hitting 30 homes this year. Okay, does anyone have any, anyone have any questions about this? Amazing. So I'm going to share this with everyone that actually joined the, the call today. This is the 12 month plan for 30 homes to sell this year. And guys, read through it. Start it today and, and reach out. Tom, you got a question? I'm just going to unmute you, sir. Bottom. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, you mentioned that there's some links for your scripts. Where do I find those? I'll, I'll flip it to you as well. Okay. Sounds yeah. good. Awesome. Any other questions, guys? Perfect. So you guys are awesome. I'm going to send this to you guys here today. Um, start it tomorrow or today. Um, get on it, guys. If you follow this plan, I would love to see you guys uh, sell 30 homes this year and grow together. So reach out if you need a hand with that thing. That should be enough information for you guys to crush it this year. Thanks, guys. Have an awesome week. Hey, Thomas. Yeah. Um, did you want me to meet with you guys for Revender, or do you got it covered? Well, um, I'll, I'll call you after this, Nelson.